Morning, Joey. Morning. It's like a Morgan here. You want me to make some coffee? Coffee time ended four hours ago. So, I realized I hadn't seen my favorite sister all week, so I thought I'd mark the occasion by bringing her a little presents. Miss Favorite, the same thing as only? Whatever. You're tired. Let me give you a hand. It's a laptop. A laptop computer. I already have a computer. Yeah, well, I knew you were due for an upgrade. Besides, with this thing, you can move it from room to room or take it with you when you go somewhere. Should you ever leave the house again? Oh, don't start, Joey. Ta-da! All charged up and ready to go. You won't have to plug it in again for a couple days. You spend way too much money on me, Joey. You got me a TV and a Blu-ray player. Both of which you've never turned on. And look, here's the best part. Wireless internet. I set you up with an account. You can be online all the time. To do what? I'm glad you asked. Besides emailing your friends, well, me, you can also spend time getting back to your favorite hobby. And what would that be? Genealogy. Remember all those charts you made and all the books you researched and how you used to bug grandma about stories about our family roots and stuff? That was a long time ago. And now is the perfect time to get back into it. Look at the site I found. See, it's a whole website about researching family history. People from all over the world log on here and share information and talk about you know, tracing genealogy stuff. Becca, I'm doing everything I can to help you. You've been cooped up in here for almost a year. Your whole world is inside of this house. It's just not healthy. If you could just get interested in something, maybe- I appreciate what you're trying to do. And I'll try and get interested and mess with this family website, whatever thing. Okay? Okay. Sorry, I gotta run off. Mary Patrick has basketball this afternoon. I'll be back on Thursday to mow your yard. Fine. See ya. You're up early. I remembered I left some papers at my apartment. Between a pit stop there and the security line, I'll be lucky if I don't miss my flight.
Did you remember to pack your sinus medication? Honey, drug reps never forget their own meds. Why do you think you have to worry about me so much? Fiance job description. I'll call you tonight. Welcome, Rebecca Norris. You are already logged in. Because your brother knew you wouldn't do it yourself and didn't leave anything to chance. I am looking for information on the name Norris in the town of Spokane, Washington, around 1922. Thanks. Becca Norris. All right, Joey. I did it. Happy now? Which one of you is Becca Norris? I am. Would you please fill these out for me? Dr. Newsom will be with you shortly. Becca, you look exhausted. Did you sleep at all last night? Have you eaten anything today? What about Brett? Did he call last night? Yes, I am. No, I didn't. No, I haven't. And yes, he did. Would you mind forming your questions in smaller groups? I've got a lot to fill out here. You didn't eat much yesterday either. Becca, you're gonna make yourself sick. You're starting to sound like my mother, Suze. Have you told her about your lump? No, she's only interested in good news. Barbara, Rebecca, Norris? You happy? I didn't finish. Because of you, I'm gonna get an F. Sorry.
You can get dressed now. The nurse will show you to my office. Well, here's what we've got. After looking at your films and checking your history, I'm of the opinion we should schedule you for surgery as soon as possible. Now, if we can get you into St. Vincent's by tonight or first thing tomorrow, we could do your procedure as early as the 10th. How long will I be in? Mm, probably five, six days. Six days? It takes six days to recover from a simple lumpectomy? Lumpectomy? Uh, Miss Norris, you don't seem to be following me. These images indicate an advanced malignancy in your left breast and the beginnings of the same in the right. We're talking about a total mastectomy on the left and, at best, a modified to total on the other. Are you sure? I mean, I thought I'd have outpatient to remove a lump, but I mean, losing both breasts, I'd rather die. Than die is what you'll do if you don't have the surgery. What about a second opinion? Yeah. Of course, you have the right to do so. But I feel obligated to tell you that any kind of delay will only worsen your situation, and you don't need a second opinion on that. The sooner you have those breasts removed, the greater your chance for survival will be. These breasts are part of what makes me a woman, Dr. Newsom. Your breasts are diseased and left untreated are a threat to your life expectancy. They do not determine who you are. I wonder what your reaction would be if your wife showed up in bed tonight without hers. What's that? Nothing. I'll call you when I've had a chance to think it over. Fine. I'm sure you'll do the sensible thing. Dear Ms. Norris, I read your inquiry and one of my chess partners is named Norris, so I tried to find out some specifics for you. He said he has some relatives in Spokane and will ask around. Do you have any first names for him to go on? I'd be more than happy to follow through with this for you. Email me back. Sincerely, Dean Stovall. Great, my first contact is a chess nerd with lots of free time on his hands. Dear Mr. Stovall, it is nice of you to offer to help with my search, 
my paternal grandmother's name was Mildred. I have no idea what her maiden name was. She died in 1986. Please don't go out of your way to find information for me. It is not life or death. Thanks, Becca Norris. Don't go out of your way, in fact. Please ignore me and get back to your chess club. That would suit me just fine. Rebecca, it's your mother. Pick up. Oh, thanks. Rebecca, I haven't talked to you in three weeks. Now pick up. How do you even know I'm here, mother? I know you're there. Your brother said he saw you this morning, and it still looked like you hadn't been out in weeks. Thanks a lot, Joey. Rebecca, you have got to get out of that house. I read in this psychology magazine that locking yourself up like this is a type of illness called agoraphobia. It's agoraphobia, Mother, and I don't have it. There's horrible stories in here about people who hadn't left their homes in years. Most of them found dead by their neighbors. They were afraid to go out, Mother. I choose to stay in because you're out there. I can't keep talking into this silly recorder. Call me when you get this message. You need help, Rebecca. This is not a healthy way to live. You need to see a psychiatrist. Love you too, Mother. From D. Stovall. Give me a break. Dear Ms. Norris, I read your message when I got home from my morning workout. Granted, it's not a lot of information to go on, but we shouldn't give up hope. I've sent out feelers to a few of my resources. We'll see what turns up. I see you sent your message at 10.30 a.m. You must have an interesting job or non-traditional hours that allow you to be home at that time. What do you do for a living? I myself am a software developer and I'm lucky to be able to conduct my business from home. I will get back to you with any information I receive. Meanwhile, keep in touch. Dean Stovall. P.S. and rest at ease. I'm not going out of my way for you. And even if I were, aren't you worth it? <sighs> you wanna know what I do for a living, Mr. Chess Club? <laughs> this, this is what I do. I overeat and I overdrink and sometimes I don't even shower for three or four days. I also collect disability, ignore my friends and family, and pray for a premature death. This is what I do for a living, and I am miserable. You're gonna know about it. 
Mr. Stovall, just who do you think you are? I don't even know you, and you're asking intrusive questions like what I do for a living. The truth is, I don't do a stinking thing from morning till night except sit around. How's that? I don't play chess or work out or program computers. My life is my business and you have no right to pry where you're not wanted. And as far as being worth it, well, I'm not. And that is none of your business either. Jerk. Becca Norris. Lucky for you, I'm not really gonna send this. Except I just hit send instead of delete. Good job, Becca. Now you make strangers hate you too. Honey, I, I don't know what to say. Well, I'm supposed to go in tomorrow morning for all of the preliminary stuff, and then the procedure should be done on Thursday. Brett, I know it's a lot to ask, but is there any way that you could be here? Sweetheart, you know I would do anything to fly back early, but tomorrow's the last day of the conference, and it's the day of my big presentation. Never mind. Just forget I asked. I know how hard you've been working on everything. I've got Susie and Joe and Mother. I'll be back in town on Friday and I'll make a beeline straight to the hospital. How's that sound? It sounds wonderful. I can't tell you how much I miss you. Love you. Good night. Mother? Rebecca? Is everything all right? Yes. Why do you ask? Because I can't remember the last time you called on a weekday. Is Brett okay? Brett's in San Francisco, Mother. He's fine. Listen, there's only one way to say this. So I'm just going to spit it out. I'm checking into St. Vincent's tomorrow. And on Thursday, I have to have surgery. It's sort of an emergency. I have cancer in both breasts. Are we talking mastectomy? Yes. Maybe on both sides. Will Brett be back in town? Brett will still be in San Francisco, Mother. Oh. Well then. I suppose I'll need to call your brother. You don't need to do that. I'm fine. I never doubted that, Rebecca. It's just that you have to consider how things like this affect the people around you, not just- Mother. Me. I just can't help thinking how this is all because of that year you smoked when you were in college. It was more like three weeks. Not to mention all the junk food you eat. How many times have I- I cannot have this conversation right now. I'm hanging up. Goodbye. Dear Becca, 
Wow, you really let me have it, didn't you? I tender my sincerest apology. You were right. I was way out of line in asking such personal questions. Please forgive me. But might I offer a solution? If your biggest gripe is I shouldn't ask personal questions because I don't know you, would you mind if I got to know you? I will await your reply. In friendship, Dean. P.S. I, I do not agree with your self-assessment. For a very specific reason, it is my opinion that we are all of infinite worth. And another P.S. Chess is really not so hard. I bet I could teach you through email. Dear Dean, what a witch I was to send you that message. It never was actually meant to be sent. I was venting over having my personal space invaded. To be honest, for a long time now, I have been shutting myself off to the rest of the world. And your attempt to reach out terrified me. I am the one who owes you an apology. Thanks for answering back. I would be willing to give Chess a try, but have never been much of a strategist. As for the self-worth issue, we can debate long and hard over that one. I look forward to your next message. Cordially. Sincerely. Gratefully, Becca Norris. Dear Becca, hi. I just finished a round of golf and thought I'd check my email, so glad you're giving me a second chance. We've got a little problem here. Um, you don't want me to ask personal questions because we don't know each other very well, but we can't do that without asking personal questions. Good point. Here's the plan I've come up with. We can ask the other one anything we want with no one getting insulted and we both have the right to decline any answer we think is too personal. Agreed? Mm, I don't know. The other part is we have to include one personal fact in every message we send. Favorite food, music, anything. I'm not even sure I know that stuff anymore. I'll start off the questioning. What state do you live in? I live in Staley, Indiana, a town about 40 miles east of Indianapolis. So why is it you don't do a stinking thing all day but sit around? And lastly, we can start your chess lessons anytime, but it would be best if you at least knew the basic rules. Can you go to the library and check out a book on beginner's chess? Let me know when you get it. Cordially yours, Dean. Dear Dean, your plan sounds easy enough, but you'd better plan on me taking the fifth. A lot. I live in Washington, Seattle. I have some health problems, and that is why I stay home. Now I guess it's my turn to ask you something. How old are you? Do you have any brothers or sisters? And about the chess book, there is not a library anywhere near here. Real good. I'm starting off the friendship by lying to you. So that might be something we need to put on the back burner. Gratefully yours, Becca. <sighs>
Susie. Becca? Oh my gosh, Becca? I thought I was never going to hear from you again. I mean, I've been leaving messages for what, almost a year now? And here you are. Yeah, here I am. So what's been going on? I've kind of been shutting myself off from... Well, everything. Well, you know what? That doesn't matter. No matter how long it's been, you are still my best friend. I know. So, can you come visit me in San Diego? I would love to show you around. Um, no, not right now. I mean, I appreciate the invite, but not yet. No one's seen me in a while, and I kind of want to keep it that way. Just because of the surgery? The surgery, and Brett, and everything. Well, it's just so good to finally hear your voice. Yeah, listen, I need to go now. I'm kind of tired. Well, okay. But the invitation stays open. And you better call me back again real soon, you hear? I will. Promise? I promise. Great. You take care. And I love you. Bye, Susie. Dear Becca, glad you're curious. I'm 31 years old, I have brown hair, I'm six feet tall and weigh about 175. And you work out and play golf, so it's probably all muscle. Bet the chicks dig that. How about you? What do you look like? And do you feel comfortable talking about these health problems? Whatever they are, I'm sure you're getting on top of them and getting healthier day by day. What exactly is being done to improve your situation? I can tell you have a sharp mind. A sharp mind is everything. After all, our bodies are just gift wrapping. The real treasure is inside. If you live in Seattle, I'm surprised there is no library close by. Anyway, just give me your snail mail address and I'll send you one of my chess books. I'm anxious to get the lessons underway. To answer your question, I'm an only child, although both my parents are dead, so I've been on my own for a while. Better sign off now. I'll be up early for a workout, then lots of code to write, then tennis, then a late afternoon meeting. Sometimes I wish I could slow down a little, but honestly, I love the pace. Talk to you soon. Cordially yours, Dean. Dear Dean, I lied. The library is just two blocks away. The truth is, I haven't been outside my house in months. I've been afraid to go out. And I still am. I'm banking on the fact that you're not a psycho, so here's my address. 584 Gatlin Road, Seattle, 98103. I look forward to receiving the chess book. I'm 28 years old, and I'm about 20 pounds overweight. I do nothing to improve my situation. It's easier to sit around, eat, drink, and feel sorry for myself. I'll have to give some thought into believing that my body is any kind of a gift wrapping. Any makeover suggestions? I do appreciate your insight, though, even if it is a little too sunny. Enjoy your bodybuilding and your tennis tomorrow. Thanks for giving me some things to think about. Gratefully yours, Becca.
earthquake for Forest Base, California. Screw this. I appreciated the honesty of your email last night. So, why are you afraid to leave the house? I promise I won't be critical. I just like to understand. And as for makeover suggestions, I have bad news. The only surefire way to lose some weight is hard work. I know it's easier said than done, but if you'll just make the commitment, I know you'll start feeling better about yourself right away. If it's any incentive, you'll have me leading your cheering section. Where were you when I was dying on the floor last night? I'll leave you with a quote by Eddie Rickenbacker. Courage is doing what you are afraid to do. There can be no courage unless you're scared. Fondly yours, Dean. Why are you afraid to leave the house? Hi, Becca. We need you to read these consent forms. If you agree, sign your full name at the bottom where it says patient. I, Rebecca Norris, agree to have Dr. David Newsom and his associates perform the following surgeries on me. Left radical mastectomy, biopsy of the right breast with ensuing mastectomy, radical modified or simple, as deemed necessary, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, the anesthesiologist will be in a little bit to talk to you. Hi. Hey. How's it going? Okay. Am I your first visitor today? No, Joe left about a half hour ago. He had to get back to work. What about your mom? Right. Well, at least you have... Brett hasn't called yet. Yeah, um... Becca, Brett called me about an hour ago. You? Why is he calling you? He figured you'd be in the middle of your test, so he just wanted to leave word. What word? He won't be coming home tomorrow. He won't? He won some sales award and found out they're throwing a big cocktail party in his honor tomorrow. He said he feels like he has to be there. But he told me to tell you that he'd try to call you tomorrow, and if not, then he'd see you Saturday when he gets in. Well, there won't be much for him to do tomorrow anyway. I'll probably be out of it the whole time. Sure. And I'm sure I'll be better company the day after I've had all of this done. All right. I want he said to tell you he loves you. <laughs> yeah. Dear Dean, I've been trying to think things through as to why I've become so afraid of my life. But thus far, 
I haven't come up with anything. Just too much to process all at once. So for now, your question will have to wait. The rain outside is sapping my strength, so I think I'll have a drink and a noontime sleeping pill and call it a day. I was going to try the sit-up again today, but I can see that's not going to happen. Maybe I'll feel like it tomorrow if the sun is shining. I was sorry to hear you have no family. I at least have my brother. He has a wife and two adorable girls that I haven't seen in months. Oh, and also my mother is still alive. I look forward to receiving the chess book. What is your favorite color? Gratefully yours, Becca. If you don't answer the door, someone will tell mother you're dead. Yes? I have a floral delivery. What is it? Um, flowers? Are you sure you're at the right house? Uh, 584 Gatlin, right? Yeah. You don't have to sign anything. Have a good day. To my new friend, and a very special girl, fondly yours, Dean. Dear Dean, the flowers just arrived. I can't tell you how much they brightened up this dreary old rainy day. It has been forever since someone sent me flowers. I used to love having them around me, even though my ex-fiance rarely sent them. Your thoughtfulness has inspired me to put off the afternoon sleeping pill, although I'm still going to blow off the exercise. Shame on me. Thanks again. Gratefully yours, Becca. I'm not even sure why I called. 
I just... Felt like talking again. So talk to me. What's up? Well, I've kind of tried to start exercising again. That's always good. You used to stay at the gym at least an hour after I left. <laughs> right. And guess what? I got flowers today. From Brett? Oh, gosh, no. It's from a friend I've just been talking to. So where'd you meet him? He's someone I've been emailing back and forth. Some guy you met online is sending you flowers. Don't you know the internet is full of child molesters? Well, if I were 12 years old, that might be a concern. It's not like that. I met him on a genealogy website. He was helping me research something. So he's safe? Of course. He's just a really nice guy from Indiana who seems to have a fondness for shut-ins. I'm sure I'm just a charity case to him. He's a workout nut, and he plays golf and chess and writes computer programs. I think you're being too hard on it. Oh, look, hey, I've got to finish this wall before I lose my wet edge. Can I call you right back? That's okay. We can talk later. Great. I'm looking forward to it. Love you. Bye, Susie. Dear Becca, glad you like the flowers. You certainly deserve them, and it's a nice way to celebrate our new friendship. So you were engaged at one time? Is that part of what's got you down, that it didn't work out? Fill me in, if you don't veto the question. And what are your mother and brother like? So today's plan was to have a drink, take a sleeping pill, and do one sit-up, huh? Glad I at least helped sidetrack the unhealthy things. And don't be so hard on yourself about the exercise. Tomorrow's a new day. Everyone does the best he can in this life, nothing more. No matter what you do, I'm proud of you just for trying. And my favorite color is green. Fondly yours, Dean. There. That's nine. Tomorrow, ten. If I don't die in the next five minutes. <laughs> Dean, I slept so well last night, I hit the floor ready to exercise today. I managed nine sit-ups. I am so out of shape. I'm sure tomorrow's soreness will make me sorry. My family. Well, my mother criticizes everything I do, and I can't remember having a conversation with her that didn't end in a fight. My brother, on the other hand, has always been my support system. He bought me this computer, so I guess you have him to thank for this friendship. I like green too, but purple is my favorite. I guess maybe what happened with Brett is a big part of why I'm this way. At the time, I thought we had something special, but that wasn't the case. That's all I feel like saying. 
I'm in a good mood. Gratefully yours, Becca. Darn, where'd I leave it? Oh, shoot! Glad a bird didn't poop on you. Dear Becca, I have some success to report. My chess partner tracked down the parents of the ancestor you inquired about. I'm including all the info in an attachment. Now, I have a huge favor to ask of you. My friend is a college sports fanatic. He follows every game, football and basketball. When I told him you live in Seattle, he asked, no, bank that begged me to get you uh -oh. to send him a Washington hooded sweatshirt, extra large. I told him he could get one at any department store, but he said, no, it has to come from the real university campus. I guess that's what defines a fanatic. Anyway, he sure would appreciate it if you could run by the bookstore and pick one up. I'll send you the money right away. Dean, no. I know you're not a big fan of going out, but this would really mean a lot to me. He's a good friend. Please mail the sweatshirt to me at P.O. Box 354, Staley, Indiana, 47108. Also, want to let you know I will be away for the next few days. Some business that can't be taken care of from home. I will get back in touch when I return. Remember, my thoughts are with you. Devotedly yours, Dean. Dear Dean, I'll miss your emails while you're away. And thanks for the genealogy stuff. I'd almost forgotten that is how all this began. About your friend's request, I don't think you understand. I haven't left this house in months. My mailbox is right by my front door. A local market delivers my groceries. My illness changed the way I look. I don't want anyone to see me like this, to look at me. Besides that, I'm fat, pale, and my hair is a disaster. Please, let me give it some more thought. Maybe if I went to the grocery while I was out, and I was thinking about some new plants for my back porch. Okay, I'll try. First thing tomorrow. But no promises, all right? I hope, in advance, your friend won't be too disappointed. Faithfully yours, Becca. Dear Becca, one last quick thought before I head out. I know you're afraid to leave your home. I thought long and hard about asking this favor of you. And if it doesn't work out, I'll understand. I could never think less of you. But just remember, each of us has courage of which we are mostly not even aware. The secret is how to tap into it. Sometimes all it takes is someone else believing in us. And with every fiber of my being, I know you can do this. I also know that if you can do it, you will come away with a new vision of yourself, one much more accurate than the one you have now. However today progresses, know that I treasure our newfound friendship. Peace. Devotedly yours, Dean. I'm 
I'm sorry, Dean. Hello? Joey. Hey, you're up early. Yeah, listen, I wonder if you could do me a favor. Could you stop by the university after work and pick me up a hooded sweatshirt with Washington on it? Extra large? Uh, yeah. Oh, sure, no problem. Thanks. I'll pay you when you get here. Sure. You need anything else? Nope. That's all. Thanks a lot, Joey. I'll see you a little later. Okay. Bye. Guess that's that. Hello? Joe. Listen, cancel that sweatshirt order. I changed my mind. You sure? Yeah. I'll talk to you later. Whatever you say. Bye. to make. The fair went up six months ago. You need another quarter. Yo no creo esto. Es bastante mal que me doblaron las paradas. Y ahora tengo que tratar con los rubias como usted, que ni pueden contar. Con qué fuerza es para sacar 25 centavos. Dame un respiro, princesa. Hey. It's okay, I've got it. Here. Forget it.
you want to have with that as well. Excuse me? I said if you if you want a hat with that, it's half off. No, just this. Okay. you're going to be okay. Just think about it. Yeah, I will. Thanks. Have a good day. Good day. Dear Becca, I can only write a few lines as I'm on a borrowed computer that I had to wheel and deal to use. If I've come to know you as well as I think, you have just ventured out into the real world. Son of a... I knew you could do it, and I'm so proud of you. You have come so far in such a short time. Just wanted you to know I was thinking of you. Talk soon. Keep up the good work. Devotedly yours, Dean. Dearest Dean... I know you're away on business, but I'm writing anyway. It seems you know me better than I know myself. This morning I was sure I was not going to make it. You have your sweatshirt. Thanks so much for your confidence in me. Hope you're not too busy and at least get in a workout. And one request, whenever you read this, any chance you might send me a picture? Devotedly yours, Becca. Hey, Susie, I'm here. Well, guess what? I'm scheduled to be in Seattle in just a few weeks. That's great. Do you want to stay here? Well, yeah, if you want me to. Of course I do. You're my best friend. So, what's been going on? I had the best day. I went to the university today. It was the first time I've left the house in months. Becca, that's great. So, uh, does this little field trip have anything to do with your computer guy? Yeah, in a roundabout way it did. I know it's weird, but he's really becoming a good friend to me. Does he know you had cancer? No. It's never come up. 
Someone's at the door. It must be Joey. I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Mother. Can I come in? Uh, yeah, sure. <sighs> Sorry I haven't straightened up today. So, what brings you out this late? Joe's been telling me he's been receiving a lot of calls and emails from you lately, saying you seem to be getting a little better these days. So, I decided to come see you for myself, instead of getting old waiting for an invitation. Can I get you anything? Something to drink? No, no, I'm fine. So, Tell me about this sudden upswing. Well, today I ran some errands in town. I went to the university and the grocery and, and to the nursery for some plants. All without a psychiatrist. Well, that's just wonderful. It's about time you decided to get on with your life. Listen, I'm sorry. There's I... no need to apologize. Thanks. It's just been really hard. It should be everyone else's responsibility to put their lives on hold. What? While you make up your mind whether or not to re-enter society. You did come here for an apology, didn't you? Excuse me? You heard I was doing better. So you marched right over here expecting an apology for all I've been putting you through these last 12 months. Rebecca, I don't know what you're you talking about. You want me to tell you how wrong I've been for locking myself up in the house like a hermit. You want to hear me say I'm sorry for losing my job and my future and my rich fiance and my breasts. That is absolutely ridiculous. Isn't that what you want? Well, I'm sorry, Mother. I'm sorry for how I've inconvenienced you over this past year, over the other years of my life, all the years I wasn't perfect like Joe, all of the years I wasn't perfect like you. I don't have to stand here and listen to this. Then don't! I have a terrible migraine, Mother. Forgive me if I don't show you out. You still need help, Rebecca. There's nothing any of us can do for you. You're so stubborn. You're just like your father was. Better him than you. It's nine o'clock. You slept most of the day. How do you feel? I think it hurts, but I'm not sure. These bandages are so tight. Do you want me to call the nurse? No. Not yet. Is anybody here? Joe's family just left. What about Brett? He won't be here till tomorrow, remember? That's right. How 
much did they take? I overheard the doctor tell Joe, total on the left and modified on the right. Both of them. I'm so sorry. Hey, sleepyhead. Brett. Sweetie, I've missed you so much. This has been awful. It's okay. I'm here now. Everything's gonna be okay. So how's your pain now? It's getting a little sharper. They gave me some painkiller this morning. I guess it's just starting to wear off. It's unacceptable. You should be laying there suffering. All done here? And how was today's hospital food? Fine, thank you. Excuse me. Why is this patient not being given adequate pain medication? Brett, it really isn't that bad. I'll handle this, honey. So what's the hold up here? Sir, Miss Norris's doctor has instructed that she not Look, be... Look, sweetie, I work in pharmaceuticals, so don't try and give me the runaround. I know when a patient's not being medicated properly. Now, what are you giving her? Brett. Sir, I can appreciate your concern. We've been giving her the medication and doses that her doctor has prescribed. If you'd like to discuss this with him, come to the nurse's station and we'll contact his office. Brett, you didn't have to do that. They've all been really nice to me. Hun, I work around these people. You have to let them know who's in charge. The doctor came in this morning talking about radiation, just to make sure they got everything. Did you ask him about reconstructive? The what? You know, reconstructive surgery, plastic surgery to get you back to normal. I've just had my whole chest cut off. And I'm telling you about what they're doing to save my life. And all you want to talk about is a new set of replacements? Take it easy. I care about your treatment. I just thought I'd look on the bright side and try to cheer you up. Brett? Yeah? I think my pain medicine is working now. Do you mind leaving so I can get some sleep? Yeah, sure. If that's what you need. I'll stop by the nurse's station on the way out. Do you need anything else? No. I'll see you tomorrow, babe. All right. Mother, if you value your life, this will not be you at my front door. Yes? Good morning. Are you Becca Norris? Yes. I have a delivery for you. Are you from the florist? No. Now, this is the starter kit we give you. The starter kit for what? My husband and I breed labs. A nice man from Indiana called and ordered this one just for you. What does he expect me to do with it? He didn't say. 
Now, the puppy's papers and medical records are in the envelope, and his pedigree name is Lord Thornton of Castles. Will there be anything else? Um, no. No. Thanks very much. <laughs> Dearest Dean, I am sitting here with my newest gift. He is precious. Lord Thornton was a little too formal, so I've decided to call him Staley, in honor of your hometown. What on earth possessed you to get me a dog? It's been a long time since I had a pet, but I already love him. And I had thought your last present was the best ever, but there is no comparison. Although the flowers didn't pee on my living room rug, my mother paid me a surprise visit last night. I tried to tell her about how I'd finally made it out of the house, and somehow it turned into a battle royal. She has this incredible ability to make me furious and nothing flat. Thank goodness for Jen. Anyway, I've been doing a little better on my exercises. When are you coming home? Thanks again for my new roommate. Devotedly yours, Becca. Dear Becca, it's been an exhausting few days and it's good to be home. I was elated at the messages I had waiting for me. I knew you would make it out of the house and beyond. Good for you. And I'm glad you liked the gift. I had a yellow lab as a kid and I knew he'd make a great companion. Why did I do it? Well, it seemed to me that at this point in your life you just needed something to love. I know puppies are a lot of work but I know you'll find the rewards even greater. Happy you're continuing to exercise. How are you feeling these days? Since I don't know the nature of your medical problems, it's a little hard to ask specifics. As for your request, I will see if I can dig up a decent picture of myself. I haven't had one made any time recent. I want to talk to you about your mother. Did you tell her about your leaving the house so she could share in your triumph or simply to gloat? What? There's a big difference in the two. Resentment is a terrible load for your body and your health problems may never be resolved until you can untie these knots inside you. Forgiveness is a tough concept, especially when we feel we're in the right. But I believe we can never be totally whole nor healthy until we have mastered the art of forgiving. Look at it this way. If God can forgive me for all I do, then how can I not forgive others? And just one last thing. Oh, I can't wait. Your mother has no power or ability to make you furious. You allowed yourself to become angry in response to her actions, but it was totally your choice. No other person in the world can make us be anything, whether it's happy, sad, angry or what have you. Think about it. Give Staley a kiss on the nose for me. Love, Dean.
And to think, I've been missing him this whole time. How would you feel if all you wanted to hear was, I've missed you too, Becca? Then all you got was a lecture instead. <sighs> Love, Dean. The last thing I'm doing right now is loving Dean. Dear Dean, I have been sitting on my porch all day, ticked off at your last email. I tried to stay mad at you, but finally gave it up. You were right. I was gloating to my mother. She has put me down so many times these past months. I was just dying to tell her I did something on my own without the benefit of her annoying little suggestions. When it comes to my mother, the concept of forgiveness has never entered the picture. For either of us. I have about come to the conclusion that she doesn't deserve my forgiveness. But I promise, I'll give some more thought to what you said about the whole forgiving thing, and also the bit about others not having power over our emotions. Okay, here is tonight's request. I hope this isn't too forward. But how about giving me your phone number? I'll admit there have been times lately I would have rather picked up the phone than banged on these keys. I'll understand if this isn't something you want to do. But I had to ask. Glad you're home. Missed you very much. Love? Gratefully, Becca. Dearest Dean, a friend just received news she has breast cancer. The doctors want to remove both breasts. She has fallen in love with a wonderful man, but is afraid this will come between them. I'm not sure what to tell her. What do you think from a man's point of view? Devotedly yours, Becca. Dear Becca, I'm so sorry to hear your friend has cancer. What a burden she must be bearing. But I'm glad she has you as a friend to bear it with. As for the man in her life, if she has to even consider if he will still love her, then she is with the wrong guy. Your friend's surgery will no doubt be a challenge to her self-esteem, but she needs to know that the world's obsession with sex only reiterates the fact that the true worth and beauty of a person is on the inside. I'll pray that your friend sees this as well and that she's able to fill her life with positives as she tries to get well. I also wanted to tell you, your mother may not deserve your forgiveness, but remember, you're forgiving her for your sake, not hers. That's why it's so important. If you're gonna pee, do it on the tile. As for the phone number, 
I felt the same urge to call you as well, but I do so enjoy emailing. It's brought back to society the lost art of letter writing, and for some reason, I think it lets people be more honest. If it's okay with you, let's enjoy this avenue just a little longer while we continue to learn what makes each other tick. Agreed for now? Golf today, so I must go. Love, Dean. Your mother may not deserve your forgiveness, but remember, you're forgiving her for your sake, not hers. Good morning. Rebecca? Is something wrong? Yeah. Well, that's why I was calling. I want to apologize. Well, whatever for? For how hateful I was the other night. You weren't exactly hateful. Antagonistic, maybe. Whatever I was, the point is I'm sorry now. As a matter of fact, I'm sorry for a lot of things. And I was wondering what you would think about a formal peace treaty between us. Since when does it matter what I think? Look, we've both made a lot of mistakes with how we've treated each other all these years. I'm willing to accept the blame for my end. And ask you to forgive me for all the grief I've caused you. Well, we have both had our problems. And of course, it wouldn't hurt to try harder to be a little more civil to each other. No, it wouldn't hurt at all. Look, I know you've probably got a full day ahead of you, so I won't keep you. Maybe I'll stop by next week. That would be wonderful. Take care now. Bye. <sighs> Dear Dean, this morning's experience was uncanny. I actually had a civil conversation with my mother. All thanks to you and your enlightenment about forgiveness. I can't say mother and I will immediately become best pals, but at least it's a start. And yes, I do feel much better about our relationship. It's a beautiful day here. I don't enjoy the sunshine with golf like you do. Maybe if we ever do meet, we could go bowling together. My friend Susie will be coming here for a visit soon, and I am so excited about seeing her. Your messages are the bright spot of my daily life. Devotedly yours, Becca. Dear Becca, I was very pleased to get your message. I bet your mother nearly fainted. I'm so proud of you. It's great how you are filling your life with so many positive things while you get through your illness. Speaking of, how is your friend that has cancer? Is she still worried about how others will respond to her if her breasts are removed? Please keep me updated and I will continue to pray for healing.
Am I allowed yet to ask about your former fiance? Wasn't his name Brett? Why exactly did the two of you break up? I remember our rules, so if my question comes back vetoed, I'll understand. You have become a special friend to me as well, and I find myself looking forward to a long and growing relationship. Sleep well tonight. Love, Dean. Time for bed, tough guy. Hello? All set? Yeah. Has Dr. Newsom been here? Yeah, about an hour ago. He said my first follow-up's in two weeks. Where's Brett? He called me and said he had a last minute meeting. He said he buzzed you this afternoon. Y'all ready to get out of here? Yes, please. Now we filled the fridge, you have all clean towels and sheets, and your prescriptions are by the kitchen sink, okay? Okay, thanks. Are you sure you'd want me to hang around? No, thanks. I'm just gonna lie down and wait for Brett to call. He'll probably want to come over later. Okay, then. You call me if you need anything. You hear? I will. Thanks. Hello? Hi, Pumpkin. Brett, what took you so long? It's just been crazy around here today. It's just one thing after another. They've assigned me a new trainee. Are you coming over? Well, that's part of it. I just found out I've got to fly out to L.A. for four days. I'll be packing all night. Brett, I'm scared. I've barely seen you through this whole thing. I feel like everything has changed. I just want to feel your arms around me again. Honey, I'd love to see you right now. I really would. How about this? How about we make a date to spend a whole week together the minute I get back from L.A.? We'll get caught up and go to all your favorite places. What do you say? Okay. It sounds wonderful. Just... Call me when you get to L.A. I'll do my best, sweetie. Love you. Love you too. for when Brett gets home from L.A. Becca, shouldn't you be taking it easy? You've only been out of the hospital a few days. That's just it. I've been thinking too much about my situation lately. No wonder Brett seems so distant. 
so our fourth anniversary is this weekend, and I'm going to move it up a little and surprise him when he gets home from his trip. What are you doing? Buying his favorite scotch and a few other things. I'm going to go over in a little bit and decorate his apartment. So when he gets home tomorrow, it'll be just like old times. Wait a minute. I think I heard somebody at the door. Becca. What are you doing here? Brad, do you have any more of those little Ritz crackers? Hi. Um, Brett, who is this? Becca. So I guess this is your new trainee. Becca, just listen for a minute. Oh, I can hear you loud and clear. And I notice you meet all of his requirements. Red hair, long legs, both boobs right where they belong. A little rough, huh? Maybe on your next visit you should... There isn't going to be a next visit. I'm quitting chemo. Becca, your doctor wants to make sure... It's my body. It's my life. Dear Dean, today I am taking a terrifying step. I am seeing Brett for the first time since we broke up. I wish you were here with me. Please pray that I can find the strength to go through with this. Gratefully yours, Becca. Wow. Becca, how's it going? Can I get you anything? Yeah, I'll have a large decaf cappuccino. You, really? Look great. Thanks. So do you. So how's work? Great. Couldn't be busier. They made me VP of marketing right after... Right after the last time we saw each other. That's wonderful. You really deserve it. That company would be lost without you. Yeah. Well, listen, I hate to be one of those people, but I only have a short... Brett, run. you can relax. I'm not here to talk about getting back together with you. <laughs> I didn't think that... I've been thinking a lot about my life up till now, and naturally you were a big part of that. And I was never really comfortable with how things ended. So I wanted to see you, to tell you that there are no more hard feelings. I just hope you're happy, and I wanted to wish you well. Hello? Is this thing on? I... I just couldn't handle it. I wasn't strong enough. All I wanted to do was get away.
You're a really great girl. I'm not proud of what I did, especially the part where I hurt you. It wasn't my intention. I did love you, though. I know you did the best you could. I guess our bond wasn't as strong as we thought it was. But that's all behind us now. Right now, I'm just happy to forgive you. Becca. Why? Because if God can forgive me for all the bad things I've done, the least I can do is forgive you. Goodbye, Brett. Just run around out there for a while. And no digging. From Indiana. Dear Becca, I got your message and wanted to cheer you on. So how did things go with Brett? If it's honesty time, I have to admit I was in hopes rekindling the relationship was not the purpose of the meeting. But if it was, I'm of the mind that things happen for a reason. Did you get the picture I sent? I need one from you now. Right soon. Love, Dean. Dear Dean, what I perceived as jealousy from you is very flattering, to say the least. But you needn't worry. I forgave Brett, wished him well, and sent him on his way. I have hated him for so long, but it was so liberating to finally let him go. Rotten as they were, in his mind he had good reasons for being unfaithful. I feel like a new person, and all the bitterness is gone, thanks to you. And your picture, and you, are quite handsome. Devotedly yours, Becca. Dear Dean, my house is getting to be more like a rainforest every day. I can't tell you how good it feels to have healthy green plants thriving all around. Thanks for the photo you sent me. You are absolutely breathtaking. Did you say your hair is much shorter now than it is in the picture? Dear Dean, my latest checkup showed a marked improvement in my overall stats. Dr. Newsom said he's indicating full recovery on my Dear Becca, I expected nothing less than a good doctor's report. Have you found the book I recommended? It was written several years ago, so it may be out of print and a little difficult to locate. Dear Dean, I remember seeing My Fair Lady on Broadway when I was a little girl, but I can't for the life of me remember who the actress was that played Eliza. Indiana doesn't have a pro baseball team, so I've compensated by being a die-hard Twins fan. Carmen Killebrew is like royalty to me and my fellow. I volunteer once a week reading storybooks to the most adorable four and five year olds you ever saw. There's one little boy named Alexander who has literally stolen my heart. I know it doesn't jibe with the times, but I believe sex is sacred, and it's the greatest wedding gift a person can give to their new mate. I'm not that much into politics, but I've always voted Republican. 
And in the last few elections, I've leaned more My father was a hard worker. Some days he didn't get home till way after dark, and my mom instinctively knew to keep his dinner on the stove. My taste in music is pretty all over the place. Country, jazz, opera, even a little metal. I've never let myself be boxed in musically. I just like what my ears want to hear at the time. It's like when the Apostle Paul said to the Corinthians, when I was a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away child. In college, I was so much more focused on making the dean's list than I was on pledging the right sorority or being the most popular girl on campus. Sometimes I think I was making up for lost time when I turned 20. I've always gone by the concept that my maker is more concerned with character over circumstance, like who we become as opposed to what we do. Dear Dean, big news. Susie's in town for a visit. She said she plans on taking me to every clothing store in Seattle. According to her, I need all new outfits to go with my new size body. Glad Susie was there while I had to be away again. If I thought the time was right, I'd hop on the first jet to Seattle myself. So I guess you could say I'm pretty darn envious of your friend Susie. Dear Becca, how's your other friend, the one who is battling cancer? Love, Dean. Dear Dean, Susie left this morning and now I'm sitting here alone wishing you were here. But I know that can never happen until I tell you the truth. There was no friend with cancer. The person I was referring to was me. I discovered a lump last year that turned out to be malignant. Believing I had no other choice, both my breasts were surgically removed. It was the worst trauma I have ever been through. Brett chose a young redhead over a fiancé. That was less than perfect. When I caught the two of them in bed together, it was more than I could take. I slipped into the black hole of depression that you found me in. I opted not to pursue reconstructive surgery. At the time, I just couldn't face any more doctors or hospitals. Now, I have to ask you. I know it's easy to accept me all the way from Staley, Indiana. But could you accept a woman who's damaged goods? I could never blame you if someone like me was not in your plans. I know now, because of you, that I don't have to rely on anyone for my happiness. Not even you. I will always be grateful for the place you have come to occupy in my life and do hope I hear from you again. Much love, Becca.
information. What city and state, please? Staley, Indiana. What listing, please? Dean Stove. What was that last name again? Never mind. Thanks. Excuse me. Are you Becca Norris? Yes. Fuel sign here, please. All right, have a good day. I love you, with or without, Dean. <laughs> Dear Dean, I am growing weary of the no phone call pact. I'm sure I'm going to be the first to break. The delivery man left your beautiful gift. Even more special was your message. I am just too emotional to write much tonight. Just know that my gratitude and love for you go deeper than words can express. Love, Becca. Hello, Suzanne Mostick. Hey, Susie. Becca, what's up? Well, for starters, I'm doing the most insane, spontaneous thing I've ever done in the history of my life. I took the puppy to the kennel, and now, well, I'm flying to Indiana to surprise Dean. Well, what took you so long? Wait a minute. Do you even know where he lives? I have a P.O. box and no phone number, so wish me luck. <laughs> you call me the second you get there, you hear? I want details. Will do. Love you. Bye. This your first time in Indiana? Yes. Is there a phone book in the room? Yes, there's one for Staley, and there's also one for Lenox County. Room 226. Enjoy your stay. Thanks. Staley Vista Hotel. Great. information. What city and state, please? Staley, Indiana. What listing, please? Dean Stovall. S-T-O-V-A-L-L. -L. I'm sorry, I don't show a Dean Stovall in Staley. 
possibly under D. Stovall. Also, maybe check surrounding towns. I'm sorry, I show no listings for Stovall in any of Lenox County. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Now don't panic. God, please help me find him. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I can't give out that kind of information. I lose my job. Listen, Catherine, maybe I'm not making myself clear. All I have is the P.O. Box number, and I've come all the way from Seattle to see him. I know he wouldn't mind your giving me his information. We're very good friends. You're good friends? But you need me to tell you where he lives? Can you at least tell me if you've seen him in here? All right, thanks. Is there anything wrong with it? No, it was just purchased here and I wanted to get it cleaned. Huh. Shouldn't be too difficult. I wanted to call the man who purchased the ring to let him know that it's being taken care of, but I left my phone at the hotel. Would you mind checking to see if you had his number here? His name is Dean Stovall. Dean Stovall, let's see what we have. Kelly? It's my daughter, Kelly. Hi. Thanks, sweetie. Uh, let's see, Dean Stovall, but I don't see a number listed. Are you allowed to give me his address? I don't see why not. It's P.O. Box 3. You don't have a street address? No, it's all he gave us. Your ring will be ready around 4. Okay. How many golf courses are there in Staling? Kelly? Two. Nope. Don't even see him listed as a member. Okay. Thanks. I've done everything I know. The post office, the jewelry store, the golf courses. I even looked in the phone book under computer programmers. <laughs> Bupkis. You sound tired. I'm on no sleep, bro. I can't believe you went there on so little information. Do you recall me saying insane and spontaneous? So now what are you gonna do? Be sick? Wait a minute. The gym. He's a workout fanatic. And it says here, there's only one gym in Staley. Lane's Athletic Center. Well, how do you know he doesn't have equipment in his house? No, he was always talking about coming home after his workouts. Look, this is the only straw I have left. I'll call you tomorrow. Keep me posted. Good night. This better be it, Mr. Stovall.
Excuse me. Excuse me. Can I help you? Is it okay if I look at your sign-in sheet? Knock yourself out. Excuse me. Yeah? I'm sorry to keep bothering you, but I'm looking for someone. Okay. Have you ever seen him in here? You a cop? Please just look. Sorry, never seen him in here. Well, would you mind checking his name in the database? Sorry, can't do it. All right, what's the guy's name? Stovall. Dean Stovall. There's no Dean Stovall in there. Well, maybe you spelled his name wrong. It's S T O V A. You want to come back here and look yourself? There is no Dean Stovall. Did he just say Dean Stovall? Yeah. He was talking to me. Well, who are you? I'm looking for Dean. I'm from Seattle. Dean and I met You're online. the one he's been emailing? Um, yes. I'll be right out. I have to talk to you. Can you meet me at the coffee shop across the street in about an hour? Yeah, sure. I gotta go. Hey, what? He's married. I just met his wife at the gym. Are you sure? And you should have seen the look on her face. And of course, she's fit and gorgeous, just like him. So now what are you gonna do? I feel like jumping right back on the plane. But she asked me to meet her. She just came through the door. Let me call you back. Hi again. Sorry I had to run off like that. That's okay. I'm Joni. Becca. I might as well start I didn't know he had a wife. Huh? How long have you been married? A year and a half. But, I mean, is but... Dean Stovall even his real name? Becca, I think you need to slow down. I'm not married to Dean. I'm his caregiver. His what? I know he hasn't told you much, and I feel bad about doing this, but I was, well, shocked to see you here, and you were bound to find out. Find out what? Becca, Dean's a quadriplegic. That's impossible. There must be another Dean Stovall. Six somewhere. years ago, he had taken his parents out for their anniversary. Dean was behind the wheel, and a drunk driver crossed the center line and hit them head on. Oh, God. Both of his parents were killed instantly. Dean survived, but his spine was severed just below the neck. I've been doing his primary care and PT for about two years now. 
But he told me he plays golf and tennis and skis. Simulations. Video games. These are Dean's sports, and he takes them very seriously. He's very competitive. Becca, Dean has never viewed himself as disabled. He sees himself leading a full life just like everybody else. I tried calling as soon as I landed, but he wasn't listed. He's listed under the name of the programming business he runs online. Dean lives in a special needs condo in town. So his workouts are physical therapy. But what are all of the business trips? Quadriplegics have to have their bladders catheterized. The catheters have to be removed and changed frequently so they don't get infected. It's something people like Dean fight their whole life. The facility where he has to be taken to have this done are what he calls business trips. And he's mentioned me? Mentioned you? You've become his life. He talks about you every single day. He's always been an upbeat person, but since you came into his life, something that had been missing has definitely been found. He's the one who saved my life, among other things. He literally taught me how to forgive. He's just amazing. He inspires other patients and doctors, his clients. He has such a wonderful perspective on the world around him. Can you take me to his condo? But Dean isn't home now. He's back in the hospital. Back? About a month ago, a staph infection set in around his catheter. It's steadily gotten worse. How much worse? His organs are slowly shutting down. The doctors have said it's advancing too quickly. There's nothing they can do. Can I still see him? He'll be beside himself. Come on. You said he taught you about forgiveness? That's right. I was the drunk driver. gift wrapping. The treasure is inside. It's really me. I can't believe you found me. Well, it wasn't easy. Where are you staying? Motel. I have to only take you to get your things. You can stay at my place. But... Um... I'm not using it right now. You'll be a lot more comfortable there. Look. You need to rest. I'm gonna go get my things settled. When are you coming back? Right away. Good. Can I bring you anything? Yes. Look in the top drawer on my bedroom dresser. There's a little black bag. Could you bring it to me? Sure.
and this is Staley oh. sitting on the couch. <laughs> right after I snapped this picture, he peed all over my cushion. Oh, <laughs> oh something else. I saw that sweatshirt that I sent you at your apartment. Do you need me to send that to your friend? Truth. My friend never asked for the sweatshirt. I made the whole thing up. What? Why? You needed some motivation to get you out of that house. And I knew you'd do it as a favor for a friend of mine. Sorry I lied. You're sorry for giving me the courage to lead a normal life? You already had the courage. You just needed a reason to tap into it. Do you have any idea how beautiful you are? Do you have any idea how nice it is to hear that? Sorry, I might not be here for you much longer. You will be with me my whole life. The black bag. Did you get it? I, yeah. It's right here. Did you peek? No. Go ahead. It was my mom's. Gosh. It's beautiful. I used to daydream about proposing to you with it. Well. Why don't you give it a shot and see what happens? I'm gonna get going. Are you sure you don't wanna stay at Dean's place tonight? No. I wanna be here. That's why I came. But you didn't come expecting all this. No. You mean so much to him. 
I really believe he's held on these last few days because you are here. I'll call my cell if you need me. Good night. Bye, Joni. I know you can hear me. I want you to know that you have given me so much. You gave me hope and contentment and happiness. You gave me back my life. I'd always get so excited when the screen would say, you have one message. Well, the one message you had for me was love. You told me one time that dying wasn't so bad if you had given and learned and loved enough while you were here. And I know you've done all that. continue to do the same thing every day for the rest of my life because of you. I know I haven't had the chance to give you a proper wedding present and I want to now. I know we will see each other again one day. I love you, Dean.
Welcome back. Our next guest is a motivational speaker, author, and the founder and CEO of the Dean Stovall Cancer Research Center in Seattle, Washington. Her latest book, One Message, A Journey Out of Darkness, has just spent its 18th straight week on the Times bestseller list. Proceeds from the book go to breast cancer research and education. Let's give a big, big welcome to Rebecca Stovall. Rebecca, I have to ask you something right off the bat. Now, One Message is an inspirational book written for women dealing with the experience of breast cancer. But what's up with the big yellow dog on the back? His name is Staley. Yet we still 